हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल बेस्ट एट सॉल्यूशन टू ऑल ऑफ यू अगेन एंड टुडे विल डिस्कस सम इंपोर्टेंट जावा इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर ऑफ आवर फ्रेशर एंड एक्सपीरियंट ओके सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द पार्ट 1 ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन आंसर सीरीज सो देयर वी हैव डिस्कस अराउंड 30 क्वेश्चंस फॉर फ्रेशर एंड एक्सपीरियंट बोथ कैन फॉलो ओके सो आई हैव गिव यू द दैट लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन ओके and in this video also we'll discuss some more uh, question answer series around 30 questions we'll discuss with answers okay so we'll discuss one by one so these are the questions uh, which are mostly asked in the interview uh, in java interview so our first question is how to make a asynchronous rest api call in spring boot okay so in spring boot how we can make a asynchronous uh, rest api call so in spring boot the answer is the spring boot we can use asynchronous mechanism in three steps so there are three steps to uh, make the asynchronous uh, implement the asynchronous mechanism in our uh, spring boot application or to a particular api so the first one is enable async support in spring boot configuration class okay so we need to enable async support in spring boot uh, configuration class so in our uh, main class in this there is in spring boot application there is a main class okay so in main class we need to annotate with at the rate enable async and second one is we can customize our async executor as per the required number of concurrent threads runs at a time okay so we need to customize our async executor there is async executor so we need to customize this async executor as per our uh, requirement so how we, how many number of threads uh, we are uh, we need to run uh, concurrently or at a time parallelly So we we need to set this async executor. Okay, so how? At the rate bin name equal to async executor. Okay, so there is a method public async executor. How we can uh, customize it? Like thread pool task executor executor equal new new thread pool task executor. So we have created an object of thread pool new uh, thread pool task executor. And with this executor object, we can uh, set the uh, all the value. Okay. Like executor dot set core pool size uh, one, executor dot set max pool size seven. So we can, uh, according to our requirement, we can change this uh, value, integer value. Executor dot set queue capacity hundred, and executor dot set thread name prefix async thread. So we can uh, add a prefix to that uh, thread as a async thread. Okay, async thread then uh, thread name. So this is the prefix we can add. Uh, and executor initialize you can initialize the thread then return executor so since this is the uh, the return type is executor type we, we should return the executor object by setting all these parameters and the last one point is add address async annotation okay so we need to add an async annotation to the service method for performing thread test without interrupting our parallel without interrupting another parallel process so with no uh, to run our async executor perfectly smoothly we need to annotate uh, with the service method but that particular method as arbitrate async okay so we need to uh, enable the async enable async in main class uh, and we need to uh, mention that arbitrate async annotation in the uh, particular service method okay so arbitrate async uh, for example arbitrate async arbitrate transaction the public void solve suppose this is the uh our method we need to run parallel so we need to annotate with this method at the rate transaction and also at the rate async and public public void solve roster roster new scheduler scheduler dto okay so we need to pass a scheduler dto object to that public uh, solve uh, method okay so our next question is Now, what are the limitations of async annotations? Okay, so in previous class we have seen how we can implement async in our Spring Boot applications. But here we will discuss what are the limitations of async annotation. If we will make all the methods async uh, when running, then what are the disadvantage? Disadvantage. Okay. So first one is at rate async annotation works only public methods. Okay. So the first disadvantage is the at rate async annotation works on only public methods. in case of private methods or protected methods it will not work it will only work on the public methods and the second one is if we will call async method within the same class it will not work okay so this is a main point like if you will call async method within the 
same class in the same class where that uh, sync uh, method we are calling it will not work it means self convocation is prevented with async processing okay that means self convocation self convocation is prevented with the async processing so this is major drawback another one is it works inconsistently so inconsistently means inconsistently means if we are using auto run tools like dev tools in our project it will not work okay so inconsistently mean if we will use any uh, dev tools in our project so it, it will not work properly consistently it will uh, work inconsistently this is also a uh, disadvantage or drawbacks of the async annotation so our, uh, another question is what is the use of transactional annotation okay so what is the use of transactional annotation so in spring boot at the rate transactional annotation is used to manage transactions in a spring boot application Okay, so in Spring Boot, transactional annotation is used to manage transaction in a Spring Boot application and used to define a scope of transaction. Okay, so it also it is also used to manage uh, define the scope of a transaction. So this annotation can be applied to the class level or method level. So this address uh, transactional annotation can be used uh, implement in class level as well as in the method level. It provides data reliability and consistency. This is the main point. It provides the data consistency and reliability okay the consistency data and reliable accuracy data it will provide to maintain the consistency and reliability the transactional annotation is very helpful question number 4 what is uri okay so uri generally you are the full form of uri uniform resource identifier so what is uri so uri is used for identifying each resource of the rest architecture okay so URI is uh, used for identifying each resource of the REST architecture uniquely identifying. Okay, so URI format is like protocol and that service name, then resource type, then the resource ID. So this is the like general format of a particular URI. So there are two types of URI. URI can be categorized in uh, two uh, types. Like one is URL and another is URA. Okay, so URN is like uniform resource name. Okay, so this URN uniform resource name identifies the resource by means of a name that is both unique and persistent. Okay, starts with URN. So the uni uh, URN means uniform resource name identifies identifies the resource by the means of the name. Okay, so URN the uniform resource name identifies the resource by a, a means of a name that is both unique and persistent so that, that, that name should be unique and the persistence so it should be starts with url and the url is uniform resource locator so this uniform resource locator identifies the resource from its location only so the uniform resource locator identifies the resource from its location the url identifies the resource uh, by its name but the U U url identifies the resource by its location it starts with http or https or ftdp etc so by any of that form like http hyper transfer protocol or like http or ssl secret protocol so it can it can be start with this uh, format so in url format you can uh, see like this is the protocol this https or http this is the protocol we can say and uh, www.example.com so any uh, websites you can say any company you can say so this is the uh, domain you can say this is the domain name and the contents this is the path you can say path or endpoints are particular uh, url endpoint you can say this is the contents okay so this is the path so this is the complete uh, a, a url example okay so our uh, fifth question is what do you understand by Jax RS? Okay. So Jax RS, what is the meaning of this Jax RS? So Jax RS Java API for RESTful Web Services. Okay, so the Jax RS Java API for RESTful Web Services is a Java based specification defined by JE for the implementation of RESTful Web Services. Okay, so the Jax RX in Java API for restful web services is a java based specification defined by je for the implementation of restful web services okay so this is the uh, format for restful web services this is specification we can say so the latest version is 3.0 released in june 2020 okay so the 
लार्टेस्ट वर्जन ऑफ जैक्स आर एस ए रेस्ट फॉर रेस्ट फुल सर्विसेज दिस थ्री पॉइंट जीरो दिस इज दिस स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड नेसेसरी सपोर्ट फॉर क्रिएट रेस्ट क्लाइंट ओके सो दिस स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड नेसेसरी सपोर्ट फॉर क्रिएट रेस्ट क्लाइंट सो द क्रिएट रेस्ट क्लाइंट दिस स्पेसिफिक ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड नेसेसरी सपोर्ट ओके so simply you can so we can uh, use we can create a rest application by rest full life service within this jax rs the next question is what is idempotent method and how it is related to rest services okay so what is idempotent method so the meaning of idempotent is that even after calling a single request multiple times the outcome of the request should be the same so the meaning of the idem potent is that even after calling a single request multiple times even after calling a single request multiple times the outcome of the request should be the same the outcome uh, suppose we are calling a particular request sending a request 100 times 200 times then also the outcome of the request the our result of the request should be the same that means consistently a response we should get with the help of this idem potent method so while designing rest api we need to keep in mind to develop idempotent api so so when we are designing or creating the rest api we need to keep in mind that we need to develop idempotent api that means always that api should return the uh, particular consistent result not like that every time this api should return the different different results or after 10 time request it will different the different request and after 20 time request sending then it will different send the different type of results so this is not the important uh, features so by this fault tolerance can be avoided okay so with the help of this idempotent method if we will develop the idempotent method fault tolerance can be avoided okay so to create idempotent we need to give more focus on the testing only okay so after creating a particular uh, api we need to test that api thoroughly a number of times by giving a number of request okay so uh, then only we can uh, ensure that is this method is a item potent method or uh, this api is item potent api so difference between rest and ajax okay so there are two things one is rest and another is ajax okay so rest is an architecture design pattern for developing client server communication system okay so the rest is an architecture design pattern for developing client server communication system so rest architecture says that we can easily develop a client server communication system using this rest architecture but the rest requires interaction between client and server so representational stand transfer rest stands for representational start state transfer so it requires interaction between client and server another thing is ajax So what is Ajax? Ajax is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So with the help of this, Ajax is also used for dynamically updating of UI without need without need to reload the page. Okay, so the Ajax is help dynamically update of UI user interface without need to reload the page. Ajax support asynchronous request. Okay, so the Ajax support the asynchronous request by eliminating eliminating the client server interaction. Okay, so like rest architecture it does not uh, require the client server interaction so it any eliminates the client server server interaction and it uh, of course in the asynchronous way okay so the next our question is what are the core components of http request okay so the what are the core components are available in particular http request okay so there are five main core components we can say available in the http request so one is like method or verb and then is like uri uniform receive identifier that is url and a url and another one is the http version and the next one is the request header and the request body okay so this is the core component so we need to pass that request header and we need to pass the request body also and the http version uri and the method or verb so this is the these are the core components of a http request core components of http response okay so what are the core components of http response in previous uh, question we have seen what are the core components of http request and here what are the core components of http response 
So there are four main core components are available in HTTP response. So that are the first one is like response status code. So why in a response when a response comes, the response status code must be there. So response status code and the HTTP version and the response header and the response body. Okay, so these are the core components of the uh, uh, particular HTTP response. So from the response status code, we can uh, know the what are the status of this uh, response. Okay. So suppose this is the 200 that is when it is success. Okay, 201 that is when it is created. Suppose this is the 400 series. So this is the like any uh, any uh, errors in the UI part front end. Okay. 500 means this is the internal server error we can say ok so, so this is different type of HTTP status codes are there with the help of this code we can identify particular error ok so we can develop the next question is we can develop web service by using web socket as well as rest ok so by the help of that web socket and rest both we can by using both we can uh, develop the web service so what are the difference between REST and web socket? Okay, so what are the difference between the REST and web socket? So there are so many differences are there between REST and web socket, so we can say so REST, REST follows the stateless architecture means it will not store any session based data. Okay, so in REST it follows a stateless architecture that means it will not save any session or any it is a it, it will not store any session based data but in web socket it follows the stateful protocol ok so uh, rest is stateless and as the web circuit is stateful so the web circuit is stateful protocol as it is session based data storage ok it stores the session and the second difference we can say the mode of communication is unidirectional so in case of rest the mode of communication is unidirectional at, at a time only the server or client will communicate ok so the mode of uh, communication is unidirectional in case of REST architecture uh, that means at a time only client or server can communicate but in case of um, web socket the co communication is bidirectional communication cannot be done by both clients and server at a time okay so this is communication is bidirectional communication cannot be uh, done by both clients and server at a time third one is like REST is based on request response model okay so the REST is REST archi architecture is based on the request response model but the web socket follows the full duplex model so the, the web socket it follows the full duplex model so more differences are like in REST every request will have sections like header, title, body, url etc okay, so in case of REST every request will have sections like header, title, body, url etc so it follows the complete uh, guidelines uh, for REST request but in case of web socket the web socket do not have any overhead like uh, in the um, REST, uh, REST, REST case so in web socket do not have any overhead and hence suited for real time communication ok it has no uh, header title body etc ok in case of REST for HTTP request a new TCP connection is set, set up ok so in case of REST for a, a new TCP connection uh, a, a new TCP position is in the setup new. Okay, for HTTP request, a new TCP position is set up. So every for every HTTP request, a new TCP connection is set up. But in case of uh, web socket, there will be only one TCP connection. So in only by using this only one TCP connection, all the communication can be done. But in case of REST, for every request, there is a new TCP connection should be set up. In REST, it supports both vertical and horizontal scaling. Okay. So in REST it supports both horizontal and vertical scaling but uh, in case of web server it has only the vertical scaling it is, does not support the horizontal scaling and the communication is slower in REST okay sorry the communication is slower in REST so in case of REST the communication is slower but the message transmission is very faster from real API okay so in case of uh, web circuit the message transmission is very faster rest is slower than the web circuit we can say what is uh, what is safe http methods okay there is a one uh, this is the slayer okay 
spell o w a f okay read the next question is what is a safe http method so safe http methods are those that do not change any resource entered value okay so the safe http methods are those methods that do not change any resource internally it will not change any resource internally this method can be cached and can be retrieved without any effect on the resource okay so this method can be cached and can be retrieved without any effect on the resource next question is what is class loader how many type of class loaders in java so this is a very this is also very important question it is mostly asking in the interview okay so Mm, uh, what are the what is the class loader? So the Java class loader is a part of the Java runtime environment that dynamically loads Java classes into the JVM. Okay, so the Java class loader is a part of the Java runtime environment that dynamically loads Java classes into the JVM. Usually classes are only loaded on demand, but usually classes are loaded only uh, on demand. The JVM will only load the class files required. For executing the program, Java class loader is an abstract class. Okay, so Java class loader it is an abstract class. It belongs to the Java dot lang package. Okay, so this Java class loader belongs to the Java dot lang package. So there are three types of class loaders in Java. Okay, for experienced people, uh, that question may be faced. So there are three type of uh, class loaders are there. That is Bootstrap class loader, and another is Extension class loader. And another one is like a uh, system class loader. Okay. So, uh, what is Bootstrap class loader? So, in case of Bootstrap class loader, it loads standard JDK class files from net.jar and other core classes. Okay. So, in, it loads the standard JDK class files. So, in Bootstrap class loader, it loads the standard JDK and Java development kit class files from the net.jar and other core classes. It is a parent of all class loader. Okay, so the it is the parent of all class loaders. It does not doesn't have any parent. Okay, so in this is the this Bootstrap class loader is the parent of all class loader. It doesn't have any parent. It is also called as the primordial class loader. So this Bootstrap class loader also we can say this is a primordial class loader. And the another one is extension class loader. So the it extension class loader. It delegates class loading request to the to its parent. Okay, so the it ex delegates the class loading request to its parent. That is in the Bootstrap class loader. If the loading of a class is unsuccessful, so if the loading of the classes by the parent is unsuccessful, it loads classes from JRE or library leaf or EXE directory or on a, or any other directory. It is implemented by son dot ms dot launcher and extract class loader in JVM. Okay, and this is the extract the class loader in JVM. Okay, so it delegates in extension class it delegates the class loading request to its parent. If the class loading is unsuccessful, it loads the class from this JRE lever extension directory okay, or any other directory. And the third one is system class loader. So it loads application specific classes from the class path environment variable. Okay. So, in case of system class loader, it loads application specific classes from the class path environment variable. It is a child of extension class loader. It can be set while invoking program using CP or class path command line option. Okay, it is implemented by Sonnet MS Launcher app class loader class. All Java class loader implements java.lang class loader. All Java class loader implements java.lang. Class loader. Okay, so this is all about the class loader. See the next question is what is object provider in Java? Okay, so generally the object provider is an interface in Java. So the public interface object provider extends object factory and iterable. Okay, so the public interface object provider extends object factory and iterable a variant of object factory specifically specially designed for injection points 
allowing for programmatic optionally and lenient not unique handling okay so the a variant of object factory specially designed for injection points okay so these uh, object factory it is specially designed for injection points allowing for programmatic optionally and lenient not unique handling okay as of 5.1 so, so in java 5.1 this interface extends iterable and provides stream support okay so this interface provides the uh, iterable extends iterable and provides the stream support so what is class not found exception so what is class not found exception so as the name suggests the class is not found Okay, so the class not found exception is a on it is a checked exception in Java that occurs when the JVM tries to load a particular class but does not find that class in the class file. Okay, so simply when a JVM tries to load a particular class but it will unable to find the class in the class path at that time this class not found exception is thrown by the JVM. Since it is a checked exception, it can be handled by either using a try catch block or by throwing it using throws keyword. Okay, so since it is a checked exception, that exception can be handled in compile time. Since it is a checked exception, it can be handled by either using a try catch block or by throwing it using throws classes. We can also add that class to our class path. Okay. So since it is a checked exception, this is a compile time exception. It can be handled through the either by the try catch block or we can throw using this throws classes. We can also add that class to the to our class path. What is out of memory error in Java? How to resolve it? Okay, so there is a particular out of memory error when it happens. A Java dot lang dot out of memory error is a runtime error. It is a runtime error. Uh, that is unchecked exception. Uh, runtime error. In Java, which occurs when the JVM is unable to allocate memory to an object due to insufficient space in Java heap. Okay, so this particular error happens when the JVM is unable to allocate memory to an object. So when the JVM is unable to allocate memory to an object due to insufficient space in the Java heap. So due to insufficient memory space in the Java heap, Java is or JVM is unable to allocate memory to a particular object. So at that time, this out of memory error is happened. The Java garbage collector, this the Java garbage collector cannot free up the space required for a new object. Okay, so the Java garbage collector, the Java garbage collector cannot free up the space required for a new object. Okay. So how can we resolve it? How to resolve this error? So. Uh, we, we can uh, resolve it by two ways. We need to increase the size of the meta space by adding the um, parameters like x x colon max meta space size flag to start the parameters of your Java application. So, for example, x is meta space size 128 MB, or we can increase it to 256 or any uh, size according to our requirement. Another way is also we can do by another way that is by increasing form size that is xx max form size equal to 256m okay so in this two way we can uh, uh, there is a, a chances of resolving this error the main role of java architecture so what is the main role of java architecture so this is this question is uh, only for the if uh, employee that is uh, out 780 experience that is Java architect role to try to facing interview for Java architect. Okay. So the main role of Java architect is developing software architecture and integrating it into Java based application. The job responsibility of Java architect architecture include which is the main role of Java architect is developing software architecture and integrating it into Java based application. Okay. So the job responsibility uh, like it can be include three points which point which I have discussed here. So identifying the business problems and designing solution. Okay, so so identifying the business problems and designing the solutions. And the second one is we can see the evaluating existing architecture system, evaluating the existing architecture systems. And third point we can say developing software architecture for Java based applications. 
developing software architecture for java applications okay so this is the third point and the fourth one is we can say trouble shooting technical issues and design flaws trouble shooting technical issues and design flaws working both individually and on a team to develop designs working both individually and on a team to develop designs collaborating with other departments collaborating with other departments to address the needs and the goal of the organization another point is like keeping java knowledge and skill up to date by attending professional events and reading industry news so since as java architect it always he should uh, up to date the java knowledge and skills okay so these are the points like identifying the business problem and designing solution Evalu evaluating existing architecture system so it should be evaluate the existing what are the present now already there it should be evaluate the present uh, architecture system and developing software architecture for java bit application troubleshooting technical issues and design flaws so it should be he should be troubleshooting the technical issues and design flaws and working both individually and on a team to develop design so he should, he should be capability of individually working and within a team he should develop the design collaborating with other departments so there is a he should be like good collaborating nature collaborating with other departments to address the needs and the goal of the organization keeping java knowledge and skills up to date okay what is solid principle in java <coughs> so what are the solid principle so solid uh, means we can say solid is an acronym for five other class design principle okay so like single responsibility open closed list of substitution interface segregation and the dependency inversion so these are the we can say the uh, solid principle so we will discuss one by one as a note given like solid principle are object oriented design concept relevant to software development okay so the solid principle is the uh, object oriented design concept relevant to the software development okay so we'll discuss one by one so what is single responsibility so each class should be responsible for a single part or a functionality of the system okay so in case of single responsibility each class should be responsible for a single part or functionality of the system okay this is the single responsibility and the second one is open closed principle that means software components should be open for extension but not for modification okay the software components are or should be open for the extension like we can should extend the software component but not for any modification so what are the list of substitutions the objects of a super class should be replaceable with the object of its sub class without breaking the system okay so list of substitution means object of a super class should be replaceable with the object of the sub class without breaking the system but the sub class like of its its sub class only without the breaking without the breaking the system and the fourth one is the interface segregation no client should be forced to depend on methods that is that does not use okay so that is no client should be forced to depend on method that does not use which method does not use no client should be forcefully depend on that method another one is the dependency inversion so high level modules should not depend on low level modules both should depend on the abstraction okay so the high level modules are should not be dependent is dependency inversion so the high level modules should not depend on the low level module both should depend on the abstraction so the our next question is what are the microservice design pattern okay so there are actually there are 26 design patterns are there in microservices but if we will say only four or five it is sufficient okay so there are 26 design patterns are there in microservices so these design patterns are divided into five main categories these are the decomposition pattern integration patterns database patterns observability patterns cross cutting concern patterns okay so in, under the decomposition pattern uh, there are five uh, decomposition patterns are there like decomposed by business capability decomposed by subdomain strangler pattern bulk held pattern and the side care pattern so these are the uh, uh, sub point of the decomposition pattern 
another one is the integration pattern okay so in integrated integration pattern there are uh, seven uh, design patterns that they are like api gateway pattern aggregator pattern proxy pattern gateway routing pattern chain microservice pattern branch pattern client side ui decomposition client side ui composition pattern okay so the another one is database pattern so in case of database pattern all the database related uh, architectures are there or database operations are like the database for service pattern shared database for service pattern sqrs pattern event service sourcing pattern and the saga pattern saga design pattern okay see the the in case of database pattern the saga design pattern is more mostly used most widely used in the application okay so the saga design pattern is again divided into two types like the one is the choreographer saga pattern another is the orchestration saga pattern okay so we'll discuss in another uh, video uh, about the saga pattern with practical and the observability pattern so in observability design pattern there is a log aggregation pattern performance matrix pattern distributed tracing pattern and the health check pattern okay so the observability design patterns are divided into four uh, design patterns database pattern divided into uh, five design patterns and the another one is the cross cutting concern pattern okay so in, in the section of cross cutting concern pattern there are uh, five different design patterns are available that is external configuration pattern service discovery pattern circuit breaker pattern blue green development deployment pattern and the canary deployment pattern okay so these are the uh, 26 design patterns which is divided into five broad categories mostly used in the uh, micro uh, services okay So the next question is difference between stream and parallel stream okay so this is also a very common question so the main difference is stream is single thread that is process sequentially in a single pass okay so the stream is single threaded and it is a process sequentially in a single pass but the parallel stream is executed by different threads multiple threads and it is running multiple cpu cores in a computer it is multi threading that is stream is single thread and single threading and the uh, parallel stream is uh, use different thread that is it is multi threading how to create transaction object in jp okay so in simply with the help of this entity manager factory we can uh, create the transaction object so the code look like this entity manager factory object amf equal to persistence dot create entity manager factory and we need to pass that uh, configuration class uh, reference here so uh, with the help of the uh, entity manager factory object we can create that entity manager okay so that is emf entity manager factory object dot create entity manager okay it will create a entity manager object and with the help of this entity manager object em em dot get transaction it will create a transaction tx tra transaction object then with the help of the transaction object we can uh, begin the transaction like take that begin we can uh, persistent data em dot persistent with the entity manager then we can also commit the transaction but then we can also if required we can also roll back the transaction also with the this transaction dot roll back okay so in this way we can create the transaction object in jpa so the next question is what is covariant return type so now uh, since java 5 it is possible to override any method by changing it the return type so since java 5, java onward 5 onwards it is possible to override any method it is possible to override any method by changing the return type return type also so if the return type of the subclass overriding method is subclass type if the return type of the subclass if the return type of the subclass overriding method Overriding method is subclass type, it is covariant return type. Okay. So the return type of subclass overriding method is the subclass type, it is covariant return type. That means the subclass, subclass return type type and the method overriding method type is same, it is called covariant return type. The covariant return type specifies that the return type may vary in the same direction as the subclass. The covariant return type says specifies that the return type may vary in the same direction as the subclass what is final blank variable okay so a final variable not initialized at the time of declaration 
is known as final blank variable. Okay. So, a final variable which is not initialized at the time of declaration. Final blank variable is that at the final a final variable, generally final variable initialized during the uh, creation, but a final variable which is not initialized at the time of declaration it is known as final blank variable. We cannot initialize final blank variable directly. So, then after creation we cannot initialize final blank variable directly. Instead, we have to initialize it by using the class constructor. Okay, so instead, we need to we have to initialize it by using the class constructor. Otherwise, we cannot de initialize the final blank variable directly. It is useful in the case when the user has some data which must not be changed by other. So, it is useful in the case when the user has some data which must not be changed by others. Okay, so the data should be final permanent data we can say. So, for example, this is a PAN number. So, you, uh, uh, for a PAN number of particular person should not be changed for a lifetime. So, this is we can initialize at the time of uh, declaration. So, note if it is static final value another important note is if the final blank variable is static. If it is static final blank variable it can be initialized only in the static block. Okay, so though then if this final blank variable is static it can be initialized only in the static block. We need to write a static block for to initialize that final blank variable. Okay, so the next question is what are the short circuit operation in stream API? So there are different short, short circuit operations are found in the stream API like skip one and the limit one, these are the short circuit operation. Skip one, limit one. Okay. The, these are the short circuit operation we can say. Example stream dot generate math dot random dot uh, limit 5 for each. That means it will print finary data up to 5. Okay, so this limit skip is of the short circuit method, the short circuit operation we can say, and this is uh, print a particular limit of data finary data. So here is limit 5 means it will print up to 5 finary data. What are the methods of JWT util class? So, in JWT util class, there are different methods are found like extract username. One method is extract username. With the help of this method, we can uh, extract the username from the token. What of the JWT token is available? From the token, we can uh, get the username, extract the expiration, we can get the expiration time of the token extract the claim, we can also found that claim, extract all claim, each token expired. So, if the token is valid or it is expired, we can also check with the help of this each token expired method. That is generate token also we found in JWT util class with the help of this generate token method. Uh, we can uh, by calling the generate token method, we can generate the token inside the generate token method. There is a method like do generate, we will uh, generate the token for us create token also there, validate token is also there, okay. So, these are the uh, methods of JWT util class. Another question is like what are the methods found in JWT filter class, okay. So, like JWT util class there is also JWT filter class also uh, uh, present and it also provides some methods for our operation. So, like do filter and the resolve token, okay. So, these two methods are provided by the JWT filter class. On the do filter and the do filter method uh, uh, accepts the parameter like request object, response object, and the filter chain. That means, and request should be passed to uh, next which uh, filter or class or any server let. And the reserve token also on uh, method is there will accept the request object. Next question is how to use custom method in filter or predicate in Java 8, okay. So, in Java 8 how can we use uh, custom method, okay. So, how can we use custom method in uh, filter or predicate in Java 8. So, by using the method reference we can use custom method, okay. So, there is a method reference concept is there. Uh, like it is uh, denoted uh, by the like uh, double uh, colon. Okay, so the by using this method reference, we can use the custom method. 
so here here example like list that stream that filter so inside the filter method we can use we, we can use this a custom method like paste uh, colon colon process that collect collected to list here paste is the class name and process is the custom method name okay so in this way we can use the custom method the next question is how to pass default value in lombok value this is a very very tricky question so how we can pass default value in lombok variable so generally lombok we if we will use the lombok uh, in our application lombok uh, plugin or dependency then we need to we need not to use like write the um, getter setter constructor because there are another sense of word like add the data and add the all our constructor add the no our constructor these are the another sense of lombok method. but in case of lombok if we are using how we can initialize the variable value okay so for initializing a particular variable we can use the added builder the default added builder notation can be used okay so by using the added builder the default lombok variable can be initialized like for example this is a class ozo suppose and this is variable suppose name we can initialize like added builder dot default and then we can initialize the variable at the builder dot default private string name equal to uh, turn or any name uh, we can initialize uh, with the help of the at the builder dot default that means now the default value is assigned to the uh, this lombok variable okay. how many type of garbage collector in java okay so how many type of garbage collectors are found in java this is mostly asking in questions in interview so there are seven type of garbage collector are found in java okay so different type of garbage collectors seven type we have uh, mentioned here like serial jc parallel jc serial garbage collector parallel garbage collector are the names of the serial garbage collector uh, working in serially one by one parallel garbage collector working parallel it is faster than serial garbage collector are the names of serial jc parallel jc concurrent mark sweep gc cms gc this is also called g1 gc garbage fast g1 means garbage fast gc and another is like epsilon gc epsilon garbage collector another one is like senado senado gc senado garbage collector also we can say another one is the z gc okay so the z gc is also very scalable uh, garbage collector we can say okay z gc z garbage collector So these are the seven type of garbage collector found in Java. How to overcome fault tolerance in microservices? Okay, so this is the question for like experience employee only. So how to overcome fault tolerance? Okay, so if fault tolerance is a very uh, uh, drawback of the microservice architecture, so we need to overcome this fault tolerance in any situation. Okay. So there are two type of failures can happen. Okay, in microservice architecture, there are two type of failure can happen. One is temporary problem. So the temporary problem are usually caused by network problems or system congestion. Okay, so this is automatically can be recovered. Other one is permanent disability. Permanent disability are usually caused by hardware malfunction, software box, or human error that requires manual intervention to correct. Okay. So the uh, temporary problem can be in, uh, resolved automatically also, but permanent disability is usually caused by the hardware or any malfunctions and virus attack in software box, software box again software box. This software box. Sorry, software box. Okay, so any software box or human errors. So, so this type of permanent disability requires manual intervention to correct. Manually, we can interfere uh, to uh, overcome this uh, type of errors. And however, to overcome this situation, any permanent or temporary overcome this situation, we should follow some fault tolerance mechanism or principle. Okay, so to overcome this situation, we need to, or we should follow some fault tolerance mechanism or principles. Uh, principle okay for example there are different type of fault tolerance mechanisms are there the first one is designed for failure okay so 
we should design the software in such a way that it will uh, overcome this failure okay design for failure so there are uh, what what the points we can follow for design for failure we can say the partition first one is partition partition is like isolate critical services from non critical service to prevent failure of one service from impacting other okay so partition means we should the partitioning or software like isolate critical service from non critical service so in our application development there are some critical services there there are some non critical services there so we need to partition between them or we need to isolate the critical services from the non critical service to prevent failure of one service from impacting the other service so in critical service there chances of failure is most so we need to overcome the situation that is if the critical service is uh, If it occurs any failure, it should not be impact the uh, non-critical services. Okay, that should non-critical services should be running as usual. So partition means isolate the critical service from non-critical services to prevent failure of one service from impacting the other service. And the another one is like circuit breaker. Okay, so circuit breaker is mostly implemented, most widely implemented. So if the service fails repeatedly, the circuit breaker will trip. And redirect the request to an alternate service or predefined fallback response. It will call the fallback uh, method. So circuit breaker is uh, technique is in this such way that if the service fails repeatedly, if the service request fails repeatedly, the circuit breaker will trip and redirect the request to an alternate service uh, or predefined fallback service. So what was the method predefinedly configured? It should. Redirect the request to that particular predefined fallback service or alternate service. So there are different stages of circuit breaker. They are like open state, half open state, closed state. Okay, so we will discuss in another uh, video that too. And the third one is like graceful degradation. Okay, so this is also a fault tolerance mechanism to avoid fault tolerance. Service should be designed in such a way that their functionality degrades gracefully in the event of failure. Okay. So service should be designed in such a way that the service should be designed in such a way that the functionality degrades gracefully in the event of failure. In case of failure, instead of stop the complete service, some functionality can be degraded. Some functionality can be not be work. Other but service should be working properly. Okay, so it should be degrades the functionality to running in a particular level. Instead of failing completely. The service may degrade its functionality and provide a limited feature set. Okay, so the great degradation is that instead of failing completely, the service may degrade its functionality to provide the limited number of feature set. Another one is the decentralization. So to avoid a single point of failure, distribute service across multiple nodes and data center. Okay, so decentralization means. Centralization is, but uh, uh, we all depend on the particular center centralized server. But to avoid a single point of failure, if there is a one data center, we have deployed the application, and if the uh, data center is any uh, region data center is not available or there is uh, failure is there, then application is will be fail. So to avoid this situation, a single point of failure, this, uh, to avoid a single point of failure. Distributing services across multiple nodes and data centers. So we need to distribute the services across multiple nodes and the multiple data centers. By which, if one data center is not available, then another from another data centers, the service should be running. This means that a failure of one part of the system does not fail the whole system. Okay. So this means that the failure of one part of the system it does not fail the whole system. Another point is like. Redundancy. So having a backup resource in case something goes wrong. Okay, redundancy means we need to always keep a backup resource in case of something goes wrong. This means duplicating critical components or services to ensure continued operation. So we need to duplicating the critical services or components to ensure the continued operations. Example uh, of redundancy, we can say database can be re-replicated to maintain data reliability, data availability and reliability. Okay, so database, a particular database can be replicated or duplicated to maintain the data availability and durability. For a long time or every time we can available the data, we can replicate the database. 
another point is like isolation okay so it means containing failures within the individual services from affecting the rest of the system okay so it means that containing the failures within the individual service from affecting the rest of the system so isolate we need to isolate the failure because, because when a particular failure happens particular services you need to isolate the service it should not affecting the rest of the system this concept says maintaining system stability and preventing bugs from spreading like wildfire okay so this concept maintaining the this concept says isolation concept says maintaining the system stability and preventing the bugs from spreading like wildfire so wildfire means when a fire uh, happens in a particular area of forest or in a forest it will spreads over the whole uh, over the forest so like uh, spreading the wildfire we need to uh, preventing the box or isolate the box the particular uh, chapter component and the fail fast fail fast means basically it's important to detect errors early and react as soon as possible okay fail fast says fail fast concept says we need to it is important to detect errors early stage okay so always as soon as as early stage if we will detect the error we can easily um, resolve that error but uh, as the uh, delayed to detect the error it will more difficult to handle this errors okay so the basically it's important to detect errors at early stage and react as soon as possible and as soon as the uh, errors are founding or detected it should, we should and the chapter should be react for that so rather than allowing box to spread so rather than uh, the concept is um, fail but concept says rather than allowing the box to spread and wreak the wreak havoc and uh, the over we want to nip them in the board okay so we want to nip them in the board and minimize their impact okay so from small and from the starting beginning only we need to nip the or we need to destroy the board and uh, destroy the error and minimize their impact okay so these are the fault tolerance uh, mechanism we can follow in microservice architecture how to create an immutable class in java okay so how we can create an immutable class in java so to make a class immutable immutable means no one can uh, mute or change okay after initializing or after declaration okay so to make a class immutable we need to make that class as final and also need to make final data variables okay so to make a class immutable we need to make that class as final and also make the data members are finals there is no setter method also so one important question is there setter method should not be provided because if the setter method is there one can uh, set the data by calling the setter method or uh, that means one can change the value of the data okay so in built immutable classes are like so in jvm in built immutable classes are there that are all the wrapper classes are immutable we can say like string boolean byte sort integer long float double okay so these are all the immutable classes this is a string class okay so this is also the immutable class another okay so this is the this was the last question uh, yes that is the question number 30 is, uh, is the last question okay so the end and thank you guys and if you think that you have uh, got some knowledge from this uh, video tutorial so please please like and share the video with your friends and please subscribe the channel and if you have any query or any question regarding this tutorial video you can ask me in comment section i will definitely try to resolve the resolve your issue okay so thank you guys